Hello friends, Asmita here. Today I want to show you one of my favorite games against Relopus. You will be really amazed to see this interesting game. So the game was played between Frederick Samashk vs. Alexander Elikhine. So Elikhine won this game not by playing the fireproof standard defense or the sharp martial defense. Uh, yeah, I mean martial gambit. So Frederick uh, Samashk was white and uh, Alexander Elikhine was black. As I said before, Shamish opens with e4, Alekhine uh, opens with e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e5, the real opus. Alekhine goes for a6, Fedrich replies with uh, bishop a4, Alekhine goes for knight f6, castling d6, rook e1. Then b5, bishop b3, and here comes an interesting move by Alekhine, that is knight a5. Nowadays, uh, knight a5 is not considered the best move, nor is bishop e7 is actually the best move. However, knight a5 was played in the game. Uh, this variation is known as the Chagorian variation. But I think Alekhine made some order mistake. Uh, it's not a mistake. I, I think first he should play the move that is bishop e7 castling and then knight a5. Then he can play the move that is c5. So after knight a5, d4 was played in the game. Knight into b3 immediately capturing uh, the dangerous bishop on b3. A into b3 obviously opening up your rook's file. And now, here comes the uh, and very good move by Alekhan, that is knight d7. Defending the e5 pawn, you cannot give away, let's say like, uh, I mean, if it was white to play. Black plays as knight c6, then d into e5, d into e5, queen into d8, queen into d8, knight into e5. Now you are threatening knight into f7 check with the knight fork and also knight into c6 check. So that's why knight d7 is more common and and uh, much better. So in the game, Frederick still went for d into e5. So after d into e5, I mean after the game, in at this point, Shamish said that. Uh, after 45 minutes, a reflection comes. Now, we will uh, check out later on what Alekhine does in the game. After 19, uh, I mean, after D into E5, 19 to E5 is the first move. But not D into E5, after Queen D5, now you are under double attack. The Rook on 8 is also under attack and your pawn on E5 is also under attack. So that, that's threatening. Knight into e5 is better. And after knight into e5, d, d into e5, queen into d8, king into d8. Do not worry. Uh, why black has a pair of bishops, so like, uh, the game is equal. After knight into e5, uh, knight into e5 was played in the game. D into e5, queen into d8, king into d8, as I said before. The, the two bishop advantage in black's position gives uh, some. Uh, expectations for black to have an advantage. Bishop e3 obvious level of your pieces and now Alekhine develops his own pieces by tempo. Bishop b7. Attacking the e5, e, I mean e4 pawn, the, it's hanging after bishop d3. So knight d2 was played in the game uh, and obviously cannot give a your e4 pawn. Knight c3 was much simpler. Then you can bring your rook on d1. However, Fred, Frederick uh, thought that knight d2 was much better. And now Alekhine uh, played the move that is bishop d6. And uh, in this position, uh, I mean, Frederick went for f3. 
It's a good move, but I think Knight B1 was much better. Giving a small trap in this position. Then you can go for Bishop G5. F6, rook into E5, and F into G5. And now, uh, white has uh, an advantage. I mean, the game is almost equal. Because black has an isolated pawn on E5, and he has a double pawn. So, he, he doesn't mean to be a pawn up. However, uh, F2 was played in the game first, defending the pawn. And now, Alekhan goes for king d7. I mean king e7. Uh, king, I think king d7 and king e7 was uh, both of them were uh, equal because uh, by both the move you can play the move that is uh, rook a d8 or rook h e8. However, Alekhan in the game went for king e7. Frederick uh, goes for bishop f2. I think he's threatening bishop h4, a check on the king on e7. Even he's threatening that is bishop g3, uh, putting more pressure on the e pass pawn. After uh, bishop e f2, uh, now Alekhine ha is forced to move away his king or else he won't, uh, he, he didn't like to put his king under checks. So king e6 and now Frederick went for knight f1. Now the knight is free because the pawn on e4 is well protected by the pawn on f3. So after knight f1, g6 was played in the game. Uh, it is evident that black must open, uh, attempt to open up the uh, game in order to leave the field for his bishops, right? Uh, now, Alekhan is threatening a 5 and uh, then a play into, I mean, hey, yeah, into a 5, g into a 5, then Alekhan can go for rook at g8. His rooks are in the open file and after rook d8 even the rook is on open file so after g6 c3 was played in the game and now alekhine replies with a5 was the threat okay there is no threat in this portion a5 he he made a prophylactic move in this portion Whenever there is a, a double pawn in, the, in your position, you must go for b4, blocking uh, a, the dark squared bishop. So, that's why Alekhan didn't want it to block away his dark squared bishop. That's why he played the move to the a5. So, rook a2 was played in the game. Frederick wanted to make a rook battery on the a5. And now, uh, Alekhan even wanted to make uh, his own rook battery on the a5 so much of the counter plays are happening on the queen side I think so so now in this portion of the 93 obviously as i said before f5 was played in the game e into f5 g into f5 and now in this portion black has an advantage as uh, he has a central uh, majority in his position. Now, uh, Alekhine can go for Bishop of 5 pinning uh, the knight as if knight done, if knight the move, knight have no good squares to go. Knight cannot go on g4, on c4, or either on d5. So, that's why Frederick went for knight c2. What's the idea behind knight c2? Frederick's idea was to play Rook e a1, then knight b4. Uh, he cannot capture uh, bishop and b4 before the pawn on a5 is under a spec threat. Then uh, af uh, after knight b5, you cannot capture a into b4 because your rook is lost on a6. So that's why after knight c2, king epsilon was played in the game. 
and, and even another third word like the fourth chair uh, all the uh, you are under a double letter i mean a fork family fork the pawn on f5 would be under attack the king on e6 and the pawn on g5 or all of them are under attack so elegant goes for kf7 the best move and now here comes a very good move by Friedrich, but uh, this looks like a good move uh, to anyone, but it does not be a good move. It gives like an advantage. What's the advantage in this position? So I would like to request to find the advantage for uh, an advantageous move for black. And the first move is easy, but find then uh, the advantages uh, plan for black. So congratulations to those who got the advantages plan for black that is a4. Then this is a necessary move, a4. And after bishop c5, which was played in the game, uh, and let's say like if black plays, I mean white plays f3, then you can immediately go for rook g8 and the pawn on f3 is hanging. Bishop d5 is ready. Uh, to come and the white light squared bishop on the set is ready to come on d5 threatening the rook on a2 and also the sweet spot for the light squared bishop on b3 so that's why bishop c5 trying to trade off the dark squared bishop as it dark squared bishop holds a uh, white uh, i mean black spawns defense and now elegant still goes for rook j and there's no one to stop Rook J as white white has not white do white do not have any uh, pair of bishops. That's a disadvantage. So king f2 was forced, so you cannot give away your three pawn, and you must never bring your king closer to the center. And now Alekan goes for a very good move. That is rook c6. After this move, white must make a decision. Yield to his opponent the command of the queen file or opt for a new restriction on the activity of his pieces after bishop, uh, bishop e3 then f4 etc. So that's a big trouble for uh, white after the move that is rook c6. So uh, then bishop to d6 is the first move and now uh, Alekhine went for a stunning move that is rook into d6. So, uh, normal uh, players and, uh, will move for c into d6, but uh, black, black is throwing away his advantage. Just a bit, just a bit of, the, of his advantage, not, not full his advantage. However, uh, rook into d6, you are allowing rook into e5. But after uh, rook d2 check, rook e2, and and then uh, I mean not rook into e2, rook into g2, check king into g2, rook into e2, king g3, and rook into f2. Now black is a piece up. So that's a clever tactic by Alekhain. So just uh, back then before. In this version, after bishop into d6, uh, Alekhine's opponent, Shamish, went for a uh, terrible mistake, that is rook e2. He went for defense, uh, the defense of the second rank, but he shouldn't went for that. Instead, better was uh, rook into e5. Uh, uh, I, as I said before, but... Excuse me. So, uh, I rook into e5 was uh, better because after rook d2 check, uh, now, you, now you have to give away your knight on c2. As uh, before back then, um, uh, white made small inaccuracies and gave uh, slowly it became so big that uh, now white couldn't handle his own position. So, that's why uh, rook e2 is a mistake uh, instead uh, knight e3 was much better uh, now after 
A four is red, but first go for rook d2 check. I think that's better. Rook e2, rook into e2, king into e2, f4, and now f9 g4. Then you can play king e6. Then now h5 is a bit threat because if, if you move your knight, then g2 pawn is lost. And then or the h2 pawn is also lost. And black has a passer on the h5. So, and that that was better. But now, after rook e2, uh, I would like to request you find the uh, exploit. Uh, black, uh, I'm black, will simply exploit white's uh, horrible bandit in this position. Find out. This, uh, the first move is normal one, but uh, then the continuation is simply playing uh, force moves. I, I think, uh, I, I want to give you a hint. The rook on e2 is actually threat, but it, does, it doesn't look like it. I, I Before back then, I gave you a hint, a hint that the light square bishop wants to roam around the board. So congratulations to those who got the Muzeris Bishop d5 attacking the rook. Okay, what happens after rook e1? I will remove my rook. But after rook e1, bishop c4. Now black uh, is an exchange of white, so you have to give away rook. But I can play rook in e5. But rook d2, after rook d2 check, now you are double attack. You are not only, uh, my, I mean, uh, ex being an exchange down is b at least better than being a piece down. Remember. So king e3 is the force move and now rook on c2 and black is a simply winning position. However, after bishop c4, now rook a e1 is the better move and after bishop d2, rook a E2 and white has uh, white position is hopeless and it's impossible to fight with an exchange down. Let me show you just a bit uh, continuation of it. Don't think that e5 the e5 pawn is hanging because I look into e5 is not possible. So black that's why we can go for assisted uh, defending the b5 pawn and now after g3. You can play that as king f6. And uh, uh, G3, after g3, uh, the g2 pawn was back then before. Uh, rook into e5, uh, rook d2 check, rook e2, and now the g2 pawn was lost. So that's why now g3 uh, is a good move. And now king f6, now you, have, you must defend your e5 pawn. And after knight e3, you can play rook g8 make a uh, rook battery and you can easily play the water as rook d2. There is no one to stop it. Knight f1 won't be so good after rook d3. So it's the uh, white is uh, cramped in this position and also hopeless. So I hope so you like this positional exploit by Alekhine and taking advantage of uh, small inaccuracies made by Shemishk. Thank you and also don't forget to uh, click the subscribe button and the bell icon below the video. You can also give me any kind of suggestion or you can give me, give me any, or you can suggest me any kind of game to analyze. So thank you and uh, have a nice day. Hello friends, Asmata here. Today I want to show you one of my favorite games against Ray Lopez. You will be really amazed to see this interesting game. So the game was played between Frederick Samashk vs Alexander Alikhine. So Al Alikhine won this game not by playing the fireproof standard defense or the sharp martial defense, uh, yeah, I mean martial gambit. So Frederick uh, Samish was white and Alexander Alikhine was black. As I said before, Shamish opens with e4, Alikhine uh, opens with e5, 
and the ref three minutes is special P5. The real opens. Alekine goes for A6. Fredrich replies with Bishop A4. Alekine goes for a ref six. Castling D6. Rook E1. Then B5. Bishop B3, and here comes an interesting move by Alekine. That is Knight A5. Nowadays, uh, Knight A5 is not considered the best move. Nor is Bishop E7 is actually the best move. However, Knight A5 was played in the game. Uh, this variation is known as the Chagorian variation, but I think Alekine made some order mistake. Uh, it's not a mistake. I, I think first he should play the move that is Bishop e7, castling, and then knight a5. Then we can play the move that is c5. So after knight a5, d4 was played in the game. Knight into b3 immediately capturing uh, the dangerous bishop on b3. A into b3 obviously opening up your rook's file. And now, here comes uh, a very good move by Alekan, that is knight d7. Defending the e5 pawn, you cannot give away, let's say like, uh, I mean, if it was white to play. Black plays as dress is it. Then d into e5, d into e5, queen into d8, queen into d8, knight into e5. Now you are threatening knight into f7 check with the knight fork and also knight into c6 check. So that's why knight d7 is more common and and uh, much better. So in the game, Frederick still went for d into e5. So after D into if I mean after the game in at this point Shamish said that uh, after 45 minutes a reflection comes. How? We will check out later on what Ali Khan does in the game. After D I mean after D into if I D into if is the post move. But not D into E5 after Queen D5. Now you are under double attack. The Rook on 8 is also under attack, and your pawn on E5 is also under attack. So that that's threatening. Knight into E5 is better. And after Knight into E5, D, D into E5, Queen into D8, King into D8. Do not worry. Uh, why Black has a pair of bishops, so like, uh, the game is equal. After knight into e5, uh, knight into e5 was played in the game, d into e5, queen into d8, king into d8, as I said before. The, the two bishop advantage in black's position gives uh, some uh, expectations for black to have an advantage. Bishop e3 obvious level of your pieces, and now Alekhine develops his own pieces by tempo, bishop b7. Attacking the e5, e, I mean e4 pawn, the, it's hanging after bishop d3. So knight d2 was played in the game uh, and obviously cannot give a your e4 pawn. Knight c3 was much simpler. Then you can bring your rook on d1. However, Fred, Frederick uh, thought that knight d2 was much better. And now Alekhine. Uh, played the move that is bishop d6 and uh, in this position uh, I mean Frederick went for f3 it's a good move but I think knight b1 was much better giving a small trap in this position then you can go for bishop g5 f6 look into e5 and f into g5 and now uh, white has uh, an advantage. I mean, the game is almost equal because black has an isolated pawn on e5 and he also has a double pawn, so he he doesn't mean to be a pawn up. However, uh, f2 was played in the game for defending the pawn, and now Alekhine goes for king b7. 
I mean king e7. Uh, king I think king d7 and king e7 was uh, both of them were uh, equal because uh, but by both the move you can play the move. There is uh, rook a d8 or rook h e8. However, Alekhain in the game went for king e7. Frederick uh, goes for bishop f2. I think he's threatening bishop h4, a check on the king on e7. Even he's threatening that is bishop g3, uh, putting more pressure on the e pass pawn. After uh, bishop e f2, uh, now Alekhain is forced to move away his king or else he won't, uh, he, he didn't like to put his king under checks. So king e6 and now Frederick went for knight f1, now the knight is free because the pawn on e4 is well protected by the pawn on f3. So after knight f1, g6 was played in the game. Uh, it is evident that black must open, uh, attempt to open up the uh, game in order to leave the field for his bishops, right? Uh, now, Alekhain is threatening a 5 and uh, then a to into, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, into a 5, g into a 5, then Alekhain can go for rook at g8. His rooks are in the open file and after rook d8 even the rook is on open file so after g6 c3 was played in the game and now alekhine replies with a5 what's the threat okay there is no threat in this portion i5 he he made a prophylactic move in this portion Whenever there is a, a double pawn in the in your position, you must go for b4, blocking uh, a, the dark squared bishop. So that's why Alekhan didn't want it to block away his dark squared bishop. That's why he played the move to the a5. So rook a2 was played in the game. Frederick wanted to make a rook battery on the a5, and now uh, Alekhan even wanted to make uh, his own rook battery on the a5 so much of the counter plays are happening on the queen side I think so so now in this portion of the 93 obviously as i said before f5 was played in the game e into f5 g into f5 and now in this portion black has an advantage as uh, I, he has a central uh, majority in his position. Now, uh, Alekhine can go for Bishop of Five, pinning uh, the knight. As if knight done, if knight the move, knight have no good squares to go. Knight cannot go on g4, on c4, or either on d5. So that's why Frederick went for knight c2. What's the idea behind knight c2? Frederick's idea was to play rook e a1, then knight b4. Uh, he cannot capture uh, bishop on b4 before the pawn on a5 is under a spec threat. Then uh, af uh, after knight b5, you cannot capture a into b4 because your rook is lost on a6. So that's why after knight c2, king epsilon was played in the game. And, and even another threat was knight d4 check. Uh, although uh, you are under a double, I mean a fork, family fork. The pawn on f5 would be under attack. The king on e6 and the pawn on g5, all, all of them are under attack. So Alekhine goes for king epsilon, the best move. And now here comes a very good move by Frederick, but uh, this looks like a good move uh, to anyone, but it does not be a good move. It gives like an advantage. What's the advantage in this position? 
so i would like to request to find the advantage for an advantageous move for black and the first move is easy but find then the advantages a uh, plan for black so congratulations to those who got the advantages plan for black that is a4 then this is a necessary move a4 and after bishop c5 which was played in the game uh, and let's say like a black plays i mean white plays f3 then you can immediately go for rook g8 and the pawn on f3 is hanging bishop d5 is ready uh, to come and the white light squared bishop on d7 is ready to come on d5 threatening the rook on a2 and also the sweet spot for the light squared bishop on b3 so that's why bishop c5 played trying to trade off the dark squared bishop as it dark squared bishop holds a uh, white uh, i mean black pawns defense and now alekhan still goes for rook g and there's no one to stop rook g as white white has not white do, uh, white do not have any uh, pair of bishops that's the disadvantage so king f2 was forced so you cannot give away your trick pawn and you must never bring your king closer to the center and now alekhan goes for a very good move that is rook c6 after this move white must make a decision yield to his opponent the command of the queen file or opt for a new restriction on the activity of his pieces after bishop e, uh, bishop e3 then f4 etc so that's a big trouble for uh, white after the move that is rook c6 so uh, then bishop to d6 is the first move and now uh, alekhan went for a stunning move that is rook into d6 so uh, normal uh, players and uh, will move for c into d6 but now uh, black black is showing away his advantage just a bit just a bit of the of his advantage not not full his advantage however uh rook into d6 he, you are allowing rook into e5 but after uh, rook d2 check rook e2 and and then uh, i mean not rook into e2 rook into g2 check king into g2 rook into e2 king g3 and rook into f2 now black is a piece up so that's a clever tactic by alekhan so just uh, back then before in this version after bishop into d6 uh, alekhan's opponent shamish went for a uh, terrible mistake there is rook e2 trying he went for defense Uh, the defense of the second rank, but he shouldn't went for that. Instead, better was uh, rook into e5. Uh, uh, I, as I said before, but <coughs> excuse me. So, I uh, rook into e5 was uh, better because after rook d2 check, uh, now you, now you have to give away your knight on c2. As uh, before back then. Um, white made small inaccuracies and gave uh, slowly it became so big that uh, now white couldn't handle his own position so that's why uh, rook e2 is a mistake uh, instead uh, knight e3 was much better uh, now after a four it is said but a first go for rook d2 check i think that's better rook e2 rook into e2 king into e2 f4 and now if knight g4 then you can play king e6 then now h5 is a bit threat because if if you move your knight then g2 pawn is lost and then or the h2 pawn is also lost and black has a passer on the h5 so It, and that that was better but now after rook e2 uh, i would like to request you find the uh, exploit uh, black 
I'm black will simply exploit white's uh, horrible bandit and disposition. Find out. This, uh, the first movie is normal one, but uh, then the continuation is simply playing uh, force moves. I, I think, uh, I, I want to give you a hint. The Roku E2 is actually red, but it, does, it doesn't look like it. I, I Before back then, I gave you a hint, a hint that the light square bishop wants to roam around the board. So congratulations to those who got the Muzeris Bishop D5 attacking the rook. Okay, what happens after rook e1? I will remove my rook. But after rook e1, bishop c4. Now black uh, is an exchange of white, so you have to give away rook. But I can play rook in e5. But rook d2 after rook d2 check now you are double attack. You are not only uh, my I mean uh, ex being an exchange down is at least better than being a piece down. Remember. So king e3 is the force move and now rook on c2 and black is a simply winning position. However, after bishop c4 now. Rook e1 is the better move, and after bishop d2, rook e2, and white has uh, white's position is hopeless, and it's impossible to fight with an exchange down. Let me show you just a bit uh, continuation of it. Don't think that e5, the e5 pawn is hanging, because I am looking to e5 is not possible. So black, that's why we can go for. Uh, this is defending the b5 pawn and now after g3 we can play that as king f6 and uh, uh, g3, after g3 uh, the g2 pawn was back down before uh, rook into e5 uh, rook d2 check rook e2 and now the g2 pawn was lost so that's why now g3 uh, is a good move and now king of six now you have you must defend your e5 pawn and after knight e3 you can play rook g8 make a uh, rook battery and you can easily play the water as rook d2 there is no one to stop it knight f1 won't be so good after rook d3 so it's the uh, and white is uh, cramped in this position and also hopeless so I hope so you like this positional exploit by Alekhine and taking advantage of uh, small inaccuracies made by Shemishk. Thank you and also don't forget to uh, click the subscribe button and the bell icon below the video. You can also give me any kind of suggestion or you can give me, give me any, or you can suggest me any kind of game to analyze. So thank you and have a nice day.